Hey everyone and welcome to my walkthrough for the first phase of the Omega Protocol Ultimate. This phase only has two major mechanics, so we'll just jump right into it. First thing that you'll want to do is drag the boss middle, because he is not going to be repositioning himself for the first mechanic. So that's what we're going to do right here. And then we get Program Loop. This will be applying two debuffs to you. First, you're going to be getting a number from 1 through 4. You will also be getting a looper debuff. Now, you don't have to worry about this looper debuff at all and the time remaining on it because you essentially are going to be resolving the mechanic by looking at the number that you are given because the number is going to be dictating how you're going to be doing this mechanic. Now, in this mechanic, two things will be happening. There are going to be towers that need to be soaked and there are tethers that will deal a large AoE around the person that has the tether when they resolve. The tower order is very simple, 1, 2, 3 and then 4 depending on the debuff that you have. The tethers are going to be somewhat similar but we're starting with number 3 instead. So 3, 4, then 1 and 2. The reason why this is important is because both the towers and the tethers will apply the twice comes ruin debuff onto you. So if you take a tower and a tether in quick succession, you will take two twice comes ruin debuffs and that means you will get the doom debuff which will kill you. So that is why we stagger the taking of the towers and the tethers like this. Again, towers 1, 2, 3, 4, tethers 3, 4, 1, 2. With the tethers, it's of course important that you are far away from other players as well. And when you take a tether, you will also be getting the minus HP debuff, which is going to make it so that when the debuff runs out, your HP will be set to 1. And this will of course be important for your healers. When it comes down to healing these minus HP debuffs, you only have to care about numbers 3 and 4, as those will be the players that will be taking towers after this minus debuff goes out. For the other players, you don't have to worry about it too much, although it is important to kind of remind yourself of the debuff being in place before you heal up the entire group for the next major mechanic. So in this case, I am number one. That means I'm going to be taking a tower first. So I'm going to stand inside the tower and then we have numbers three taking away the tethers from the group and everybody else hangs around the towers because those are safe. Then we have number two staking the towers and number fours taking the tethers and after this number threes will be taking the towers and they of course need to be healed as well because they just got their minus HP debuff and then the number ones will take the tethers and then number fours take the towers again make sure you heal them and number twos will be taking the tethers and that will resolve this mechanic after this is done a lot of people will be dropping to one HP because of course numbers one and two will be having the minus HP debuff. So that is why you need to wait until right about now before you start healing people, because otherwise they will not be healing time for the second mechanic. Now, second mechanic is Panto Crater, passed on a really bad screen, but this one is a little bit better. Going to be getting three debuffs here. Again, you'll be getting a number. You will be getting a prey marker, which is going to indicate when you will be targeted with a group stack. You will also be getting a guided missile debuff which indicates when you will be taking a solo AoE. Now again, just like the previous mechanic, we don't care about these two debuffs. We only care about the number that we are given. For this one, it's important that we have four people on each side, of course, having a one through four number. So that is why you need light party stacks for this. You also want a priority system to adjust because if you have two number ones in the left group, for example, one of them needs to go to the right and then the right group will also have a duplicate number for which one of them needs to come to the left. So make a priority system so that you can ensure that you have four people in each group, one, two, three and four debuffs. Then we get these flamethrower AOEs that you can see on the screen right now and they are going to be rotating either clockwise or counterclockwise. It's random how this goes, so just pay attention to where the first AOE goes and then you can start your movement. The way how you do the movement can go in a couple of different ways, but the way my group decided to do it is the people that need to stack together for the group share, they are chasing the AoE, and then the player that needs to take their solo stack, they are going to be splitting off on the outside of the arena, and when they have to come back to the group, they are going to be cutting through the boss's hitbox to do so. And then of course the people that are just 
in the group stack, they are going to be walking around on the boss's hitbox, like on the outer edge of the boss's hitbox, so that we basically create three lanes. We have the middle lane where people are moving with the group share, we have the outer lane that can be used to move away from the group, and we have the inner lane which can be used to move back to the group. The reason why that's important is because everybody will periodically drop AoEs underneath their feet. So, you get your debuffs, you go to the correct group, and then you see where the flamethrower is going off. In this case, it's clockwise. So we start moving clockwise, and you can see our AoEs going off right here. So, first group share goes out, means number 2 goes away, number 1 comes back. Second share goes out, number 3 splits off, number 2 comes back. Third laser beam goes out, number 4 goes away, number 3 comes back. And then the fourth group soak goes out, and then also individual AoE. That's the end of the first part of the mechanic. For part 2, make sure that everybody is healed up and has some mitigation, because there will be two things that will be happening. The first thing that will happen is that the two furthest players away from the boss will be targeted with a tank buster. This one will also give you a magic vuln for each hit that it does, so you can't overlap these tank busters, unless you use tank in vulns. So there are two ways that you can do this. Either you can have your tanks split away northeast and northwest to bait their tank busters and just use cooldowns, and then you have the south side of the arena to deal with the laser beams. The way how my group decided to do it is we have both of our tanks stack together and use a tank in Vuln, which leaves much more room on the back of the boss to deal with the laser beams. The reason why we did this is because the laser beams are completely random. In O11 Savage these were baited by distance as well, but in this fight it is completely random who gets targeted with these laser beams. It's not going to be on your tanks though, um, but it means that there is a little bit more randomness to it. So doing it this way, where we have our tanks stacked together, gives us enough room on the back of the boss to just take static positions. So that way it doesn't matter who gets the laser beams first, everybody can stand in their position for the entirety of the mechanic. It is important though that you stay inside or on the boss's hitbox so that you don't accidentally end up baiting one of the tank buster cleaves. And you'll be able to see it resolve right here. So laser beams go out, our tanks are taking their tank busters, and then the second set of laser beam goes out while our tanks are still taking their tank busters. And then that is going to be the end of the phase. You get your enrage cast right here, but we ended up skipping that, and then we go into phase two. So again, I'm just gonna recap real quick from the beginning of the fight, so that you can see it in its entirety. So first thing that you wanna do is you drag the boss to the middle, and then you get ready for your debuffs. Look at what debuff you have. 1, 2, 3, 4 for the towers, 3, 4, 1, 2 for the tethers. So number 1 stake towers, 3 take the tethers. Then number 2 will be taking the towers and number 4 will be taking the tethers. Then number 3s will take towers, number 1s will take tethers, but make sure you heal the number 3s because they just got their minus HP debuff resolved. And then we have number 4's taking towers, number 2's taking tethers, and again, heal the number 4's because they just had their minus HP debuff resolve. End of the mechanic. Don't heal up just yet, wait for the final minus HP debuff to resolve first, and then you can start healing and mitigating for Panto Crater. As you get your debuffs, move left and right to your light parties, adjust if necessary. Look if it's clockwise or counterclockwise, and then start moving in the correct direction. First stack goes out, number 2 goes away, number 1 comes back. Second stack goes out, number 3 goes away, number 2 comes back. Third stack goes out, number 4 goes away, number 3 comes back. And then we have the fourth stack. Go middle for heals and mitigation and then go to your pre-assigned positions. Make sure that you stay on the boss's hitbox so that your tanks can bait the tank buster by being the furthest away. And then make sure that you do not overlap any of these laser beams. And then that is the end of phase one. So if you have any more questions about the phase, then feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll definitely get back to you. But for now, I wanna thank you for watching. I wanna thank my Patreons for their support and I'll see you in the next one.